just like to again thank everyone for coming this evening. We really do appreciate you taking the time this evening to come and hear the gospel. A few verses to read, please, if you have a Bible. And the first is in John chapter 3, John 3, and verse 1 it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And in verse 4, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? And verse 7, down to verse 7, the Lord Jesus speaking again said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And down to verse 14, And as Moses lift, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then just finally in Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, verse 46, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried out the more a great deal, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called, called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he cast away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. And trust that God will bless the reading of his word. So just very simply, in the drive in this afternoon, I just want to simply just think about must have. Must have. You know, in the world today, as we grow up, there's so much, no, no matter what um, age group we fall into, there's so much about must have. Whether it's the little boys and girls, or whenever they're at school and everything, and at home, it's, I must have that toy. If you ever took your, if you have children, I have two, a wee boy and a girl, and sometimes you take them to the shop, and they see a toy, and they're like, I must have that. I would really want that, it's not that I want it, but I must have that, Daddy. Can, can you buy that for me? Or whether, you know, that's bad enough, but whether I've not quite this age, age group yet, but teenagers, and they maybe they're at home and they're on their phone and they think, Mum, Dad, I must have the new phone. I must have a new computer. And then there's maybe those of us and that we're older, and we think we must have the latest car. We must have the best job. We must have the biggest house. But in the world today of so much, things that we really say are must-haves. I just want to ask you one question. Really the biggest must-have, do you have Christ? As you sit in the car this afternoon or maybe as you walk down the street, I just want you to ask yourself that question. Do I have Christ? And what I mean by that is, do you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Has, has there been that moment in your life where you have realised that I am a sinner? And if I ever want to be in heaven, I must have Christ. I must have the Lord Jesus Christ as my Saviour. You know, we read in, in the Gospel of John, the Lord Jesus Christ, he could say, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I just want to make you aware this, this afternoon that if you ever want to be in heaven, if you ever want to have your sins forgiven, you must have Christ. You must have the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour. You know, in, the, in, in our two readings there, we read about a man, Nicodemus, and a man, Bartimaeus. Two men who, it seems that they had heard about the Lord Jesus Christ. We can think about this man, Nicodemus, a man who was a Pharisee, a man who knew the Old Testament inside out, upside down and back to front, who you really knew all there was to know and could have couldn't do the scripture off by heart. 
But you know, as he heard about the Lord Jesus Christ, and as he even witnessed the miracles that the Lord Jesus Christ had done, he realized that here there was something different. That there was something missing in his life. Even though he knew all about the Bible and different things, he realized that there's something missing. He realized that he must have the Lord Jesus Christ. And there we read how that he came to Jesus by night. He realized that this was a matter of greatest urgency. It was something that couldn't wait until the morning. And he came by night to inquire of the Lord Jesus Christ about how that he could be in heaven. How could he be born again? And as the Lord Jesus Christ explained to him that day, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And as he pointed him back that day to Moses in the wilderness, lifted up the serpent. And as he, told, as he told him that even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Nicodemus, I believe that day, realized that he must have Christ. And he must have him there and then. And then we thought there about that man, blind Bartimaeus. A man who had been blind probably since his birth. A man who sat by the wayside begging, who really had nothing of this world. But you know, as the crowd went by that day, he, re he realised that day, there's something happening here. There's something that's, that's not happened before. And they said, well, what's all this commotion? He could hear the noise. And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth passes by. And that day, Bartimaeus realised this is someone that I need. This is someone if I ever want to have my sight healed. I need Christ. I need Jesus of Nazareth. And we read there how that he shouted out, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And the people they told him, Bartimaeus, keep quiet. Just don't you worry. But he cried out the more saying, Jesus of Nazareth. He's really saying, Jesus, I need you. And Jesus stopped and he was brought before him and he asked Bartimaeus, what is it that you want? And Bartimaeus just said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And how that day the Lord Jesus Christ, he healed him of, his, of, his, of the need that he had that day. And he was made whole. But I just want to, as I said, I want to ask you this morning or this afternoon, do you have Christ? Is he your saviour? We said, well, Robert, well, First of all, Robert, why do I need Christ? What is it that makes me that I need Christ? You know, we turn to our Bibles, it tells us that we're all born in sin. That we're all unfit for heaven. The Bible says that there is none that doeth good, no, not one. It says that for us by one man's sin entered into the world, and death by his sin, so death is passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. The Bible leaves it very clear and plain that we are not fit to get into heaven. The way that we're born, that we're born, that we're going away from God, that we're disobedient and that we're far from God. And that is the reason that we need Christ. That is the reason why I need Christ, the reason why you need Christ, is to have our sins forgiven. To be in heaven. Because in heaven is a holy place. Heaven is a place where there is no sin. The Bible says, not that defileth shall ever enter in. That just really means that there will never be sin in heaven. And we need Christ so that we can have our sins forgiven. Well, what does it mean to have Christ? Robert, you say, well, if I have Christ, what does it mean? You know, as a little boy of, of 11, on the 27th of January, I received Christ as my saviour. That's the day that I took Christ to be mine, to be my saviour. You know, that day, what did I get? I got unforgettable forgiveness. I got the forgiveness of sins. Every single one of my sins was forgiven. I was fit for heaven. For the very first time in my life, I, was, I would be able to be in heaven. Not only did I get forgiveness, but I was given unparalleled peace. I was given peace with God. You know, the Bible, as we read it, it tells us that because of our sins, really, that we're the enemies of God. But because 
the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins. And because I have Christ, I have peace with God. Not only did I get peace, but I have an unbreakable hope. A hope that, not that we hope, oh, we say, well, I hope I'll get home, we're not sure. But this is a hope that's unbreakable, it's unshakable, it's sure, a hope that I will be in heaven. That no matter what happens, that I will be in heaven. Not only forgiveness, peace, hope, but joy. The moment that I received the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and ever since it, there's been a joy in my heart that He is mine, that Christ is mine. An unending joy, a joy that goes on and on, that will not only last in this life, but will last into eternity. Let me ask you, do you have any of those things? If you have Christ, you have them. But if you don't have Christ, you enjoy none of those things. We say, well, Robert, how can I have Christ? How can I come into this peace, this forgiveness of sins? How can I have this hope and this joy? Uh, we read there about the Lord Jesus Christ as he was talking to um, Nicodemus that day. He says, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. And we want to say that for God to love the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible tells us that if you want to have Christ, you must trust him. Trust. T-R-U-S-T. -S the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, salvation is very, very simple. Even the youngest that is here, they can be saved. No matter what age you are, whether you're 5, 6, 7, 8, or whether you're 77 or, or 88, you can have Christ today. That's the amazing thing about salvation. If you've come here this afternoon without Christ, you can have him today by simply putting your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, realizing, yes, that I'm a sinner. But I believe whenever the Lord Jesus Christ, whenever he died on the cross, that he was taking the punishment of my sins, that he was taking the punishment that my sins deserved. And I believe that Jesus died for me. That's how you can have him. By simply putting your trust in him, having faith in him. But what if I don't have Christ? What does it mean, Robert, if I don't have Christ? It means, that I've said already, that we have no peace with God. More than that, it means that we're under the wrath of God. It means that we're unfit, that we will never, ever be in heaven. And I just want to warn you this afternoon that the only must-have of this world is Christ. Because time ends. And each of us, whenever we die, the grave is not the end. There is an eternity that must be faced either in heaven or hell. And unless you have Christ, there is no hope. Unless you have Christ, there is no hope. Christ is the only hope. Christ is the only answer for eternity. You must have Christ if you ever want to be in heaven. Because none of us know. You know the important thing is that, we, that if you don't have Christ, that you have him now. You know, none of us know what's going to happen. None of us know what's ahead of us. Anything can happen to us at any time. And if you die without Christ... There is no hope. It's hell forever and forever. You know, we read there about those two men, Nicodemus and Bartimaeus, two men who realized that they needed Christ, that they needed the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, there's another man in our Bible. He's found in the book of Acts, in, um, chapter 26. A matter of fact, he's a king. A man, King Agrippa. 
a man who had heard all about the Lord Jesus Christ, who had listened to the Apostle Paul tell all about the Lord Jesus Christ, about how the amazing things that he had done in his life, not only the amazing things that he had done, but how that he had died on the cross, how that he had died that there would be those who they would trust in him and be saved. But just listen to what King Agrippa said that day. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost thou persuadest me to have Christ. Almost. You know, we never read of Agrippa having Christ. We never read of that king accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as his saviour. But just this afternoon, I don't want you to make the same mistake. Don't say almost. This afternoon, you can have Christ. He will be your saviour today. You can have him today. It will be the best decision that you will ever make. It's the best decision that I've ever made to have him as my saviour. He's a number one must have, not only in this world, but for eternity. As you go home, and maybe uh, well, no matter what age you are, whether you're a boy or a girl, whether you're older, and you think about things that you need, things that you would like to have, I want you to remember this must have. I must have Christ. If I ever want to have my sins forgiven, I must have Christ. He is the only one, he is the one who, who came from heaven, who came down into this world. He died on the cross. The Bible tells us he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, the punishment that, that I deserved, the punishment that your sins deserved was laid upon him. And with his stripes, I, with his stripes, you are healed. I trust that this evening, this afternoon, as you listen to these words, that you will take Christ, that you will take him as your saviour and you will put your trust in him.